So hello everyone and welcome to Sambhav Law. In today's session, we have with us Ms. Sri Manjiri Sur, who scored a very good All India rank of 161 in the CLAT PG 2023 paper. So Sri Manjiri, firstly, I would like to congratulate you, and I would like that you would you know introduce yourself to the audience. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sri Manjiri. I graduated out of Gujarat National Law University in 2018, and since then I've been practicing as an advocate at the Calcutta High Court. And I wrote CLAT PG 2023, and this was my first attempt at CLAT. And by God's grace, uh, I secured a rank of 161. That's good. So, Shimanjiri, if I come straight towards the preparation aspect of the whole thing. So, as you know that the pattern itself changed a lot. So, what was your preparation method when it comes to the case laws? And how did you prepare them? What, you know, like how did you, you know, keep so many things in mind? And like, how did you go with it? The whole thing. Right. Uh, so as far as my preparation is concerned, the first thing, the first problem that I faced was the time constraint. Because since I was working at the same time and I was preparing, I had less time on my side. So what I strategized was that I would focus solely on case laws. Because one thing you have to see is that the CLAT PG exam, that is that the sample papers that they released was more or less, they kind of revealed the structure they were going to follow. And if you would listen to the analysis of the sample papers that were uploaded on the CLAT portal, you could understand the philosophy of the exam, the approach towards the exam that they were taking, which was more of qualitative understanding of law and a more uh, practical and uh, analytical understanding of law that you could figure out from the structure of the sample papers that was given. So what I figured I would do was I took the last two years recent case laws, which is of year 2021 and the judgments of 2022 and some major case laws which has come up since 2018 because there were a, quite a lot of landmark judgments like Uttu Swami and everything, which changed a lot of uh, laws, like the limitation law case laws. So what I did was that I picked up all of those uh, case laws first. And I understood that first what it requires is a cursory reading of the entire judgment. Because if you would see the sample papers itself cited directly out of paragraphs in the case laws. So if you give a give a cursory glance to the entire judgment you more or less have an understanding of what is there in the judgment so when you read the passage you can more or less connect that oh you know it is related to this particular law so maybe these are the case laws that are relevant that is 50 percent of the work done no that is a very, very, yeah that is a very very valid point as you pointed out so you were saying for the Right. So that was my first strategy. Second, what he helps when you follow this approach is that after I finished my cursory reading, I understood, say, for example, I'm reading Puttaswami, Justice Puttaswami, the right to privacy case. Now I read everything. I understand what is happening in that case law. That case law is done. Second step is that in that case law itself, the Supreme Court at the court which has passed a judgment on it has itself referred to certain judgments. The lawyers have really, uh, you know, relied on certain judgments while making their arguments. So what you do immediately is that you go one step backward and you immediately read those judgments because they're related judgments. So once you read that, you have more or less a quite a, you know, good structure of uh, understanding. Now, as far as foundational subjects are concerned, say, for example, if you would see CLAT PG this time came out with a syllabus structure in their portal where they very specifically told you that you read case laws, you read petitioner respondent arguments. So what I did was that I stuck to the bare minimum of the syllabus. Now, what I assumed and thankfully it worked for me was that they were not looking for only of knowledge of foundational laws. They were also looking for us to be able to apply that. Like, for example, I remember, I think there was a question about what is adjusting generis. That is pure yes. law question. Hmm. But if you see the rest of the paper, there were quite a few analytical questions also. There were derivational questions. Like, I think there was a murder or a uh, case where there was a case law given and we had to derive. There yes, was another yes. factual scenario given, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So we had to apply that also. So as you could see, I found the paper very balanced, to be honest. Like they gave 
straight direct questions as well they give derivational questions as well so it's like they're testing both your foundational knowledge and your analytical skills so for that what i thought was that if i go back first i read the judgment then i take a step back and then i read the related judgments once you read that you somewhat more or less have a grasp on the subject itself because honestly if you have the patience to read through a supreme court order you have learned half the law right there so exactly so you know like uh, there you have some uh, basis of your law done right there i think that doing that itself would cover about 70% of your syllabus the rest of the 30% is pure knowledge that you would have to do from books and videos there's multiple videos available now for that what i did was that i took all the subjects and i decided that look one thing that i did not do was i did not let go of any subject i covered all the subjects before i went so for example if there's a person who thinks that i am good at constitutional law so you know i assume that past year trends were that uh, constitutional law was there were five questions so i will focus on that more and not focus on ibc at all or not focus on environmental law at all that is a wrong strategy to me because you do not know what the que- the person who is making the question paper is thinking these patterns one thing i saw in this paper is that the pattern cannot be predicted that is Especially- a very valid, valid point that is a very valid point because the pattern itself uh, you cannot say that you know when they are going to focus upon the recent cases when they are they going to focus upon the you know backwards previous yeah that is like the big issue with this paper yes that was the problem with this paper they were they relied on 2013 2018 case laws so uh, as a strategy what i did was that i since i did not decide to let go of any subject but i also had a time constraint i decide i decided to analyze the sample papers properly i devoted a lot of my time on the sample papers and i saw that there were certain subjects that they were focusing on only in the theory parts if i like jurisprudence they were only focusing on ju- on uh, theory yeah. parts and constitutional law they were focusing on other case laws you know they were focusing on what the, what is the petitioner saying or trying to find some analytical question out of it then environmental law they were asking kind of like gk questions out of it so that more or less gives you an idea of what is required to be covered each subject has to be approached differently so once you get that idea it becomes very easy to cover then you can change your strategy so for example i did not read any books in constitutional law but jurisprudence i read vd mahajan <laughs> and i went no that is the only way to do it because jurisprudence is a, as a subject you cannot predict as to what jurist what school of law exactly. you know what question they will exactly ask you so you have a 50 50% chance that you might get a question that has that particular topic that you have read or you might not have then what exactly. comes into play is the paragraph itself it helps you exactly. answer a lot of questions basically and if you have yes. the technical know how as to how to tackle that particular uh paragraph itself and after that you also know how to read that particular thing and you know manage in two hours to you know do the whole paper that is the skill that clat pg is looking for basically in this particular really? paper exactly. yeah and exactly. if i talk about the length of the paper shri manjri because you know the length of the paper a lot of students said you know the paper was very very lengthy and you know two paragraphs and three paragraph you know mera chhoot gaya and everything what like what was your take on that like were you able to manage the whole paper Yes, I could manage the whole paper. Um, I did not find it lengthy, to be honest. But that is a personal uh, yeah. feeling and mm-hmm. personal uh, take on it. Because, for example, I read very fast. So when I'm reading my paragraphs, I'm reading it very fast, and I'm already making sure that you know the important points are noted in my head. So when I'm solving the questions. i am not i don't have to constantly refer back to the paragraph but again this is a very personal uh, set of you know opinion that i have yeah. so this is this may not work on everybody no because see the whole thing the whole premise of this whole thing is that you already have that skill of reading very very fast and that only happens yeah. that you know in your college itself you have trained yourself in that manner you know only then yeah. it can work out so you have to 
you know constantly you have to practice it's like you know reading newspapers reading the exactly. case laws reading the blogs you know practicing mock papers that is the way you increase your reading speed apart from that exactly. there is no other way so some people they are already good at it but there are some people you know there who have to work upon that speed part so that is why i think that reading of case laws reading of articles and you know of practice of mock papers as many as you can are these you know these type of things are there that you need to focus upon in order to do well that is very important and one thing that i would like to add on to your point is that when a person is say for example reading a case law or is reading an article if that person can time themselves and say that look you know i'm going to finish this and i'm going to understand this and i'm going to give myself say 2 hours for this it's okay you take any time say if it's a five page judgment and you want to take 24 hours it's all right not a problem but as long as you are understanding it you're finishing reading it and you're understanding it that entire process if you time yourself slowly slowly you can gain that speed and one more thing mr manjri i would like to uh, point like ask you and also like you know point out to the audience like what was the uh, time that you basically took like you said that you were not having a lot of time to so prepare for this paper so exactly when did you start your preparation in this whole thing i started 20 days ago 20 days before nice. the exam and like before this have you prepared for like anything like judiciary or like in the college itself you were very very you know active while you know reading and everything i yeah i've always liked reading i mean i since i was a kid i was into reading it's like one of my hobbies but um, i've never sat for other legal exams okay. this was my first this was your first legal exam that you gave basically i see and like what would you say like the time that you spent in college like was that a very impactful time that you know that helped you out in this whole thing okay um before i start answering this i would just like to say that again this is a very personal experience you know so yeah yeah very I, that is the point person. yeah from person to person definitely exactly so for me the first thing uh, that helped was that i had already written clat before the undergraduate program in 2013 so i more or, i i was more or less comfortable with the competition system i can more or less gauge where the rest of the people are the second thing that uh, i would suggest say that yes my college education did help because um i spent 5 years in an nlu so i understand the level of thinking that they're expecting out of us when we're writing this paper i uh, so and uh, i did spend a lot of time in my college with active reading i was participating in a lot of debates moots you know writing papers and everything so kind of all of that information stayed with me that, that everything that like, you know the mindset itself was groomed that way for us so i think somewhere down the line yes that does give you a certain edge but on the other hand it is not something that one should completely rely on because there are other people also who do not have an nlu background and who have done better who have done an amazing job yeah exactly so it's a it's a very person to person uh scenario you know it's like a lot of people see what they have approach about is that you know they do not have an nlu background and they basically say that uh, we do not have an nlu background and because of that we are at a disadvantaged position because the kind of questions that have been asked are expected from a person who has that nlu you know education or something so that is a myth that i just wanted to you know debunk for the students themselves yes. that it depends from yes. person to person that you know how you spend your time yes. when you were in college that is the biggest thing exactly. that one has to understand it is not from exactly. the education that uh, college education that matters it matters that what amount of effort you were putting in because there are a lot exactly. of students you know who study in nlu and are doing very very well but not everyone is able to score that good in, in yeah. because everybody is different that is the main approach exactly. that i would like to say exactly yeah and apart from that like if i come towards the foundational subjects you basically uh, told us about jurisprudence and everything how about company law were you also like in the approach like you know were you were like basically you knew that company law may come or may not come like what aspect like how did it go for you okay um about company law uh, i had an added advantage again this is a very personal experience but i had an added advantage because i am into company litigation okay so i 
kind of deal with a little bit of company law on a daily basis apart from that what i did of course i don't deal with the entire companies act throughout the day mm. so uh, what i did was that company law i focused only on two things number one is the bear act if you for your uh, for a person who's new to company law i always say that if you're trying to understand company law read the bear act because it's like a story book Okay. all the sections are arranged perfectly well you take a topic all your sections are there and it reads so easy yeah so first thing you do when you're new to company law because i can understand that com- company law is very daunting for for few yeah. people it's a big act yeah and um, luckily the 1956 act does not come yeah. now it's only the 13 act yeah so it's a big act it's a little daunting but i always say that you know you read you read it like you would read a story book you first read the introduction which is the first few sections which introduces you to the simple concepts of con- company law and then you go you pick a say for example you want to read uh, shareholders about shareholder meetings and everything there's an entire chapter dedicated to it and the sections are arranged very logically so you start reading it all step by step that is the approach to company law and after that after when you have understood it you pick up the landmark case laws in our in company law and you read them because company law is a to be honest i find it as a very technical law so all of the explanation of company law will not be found in textbooks it will only be found in judgments justice uh, nariman has done a huge work and explained half of them in his judgments so all of them will be found in his judgments no that is true because when it comes to company law a lot of people you know they have this fear that company law itself is very very difficult because it does not relate to the day to day life if you talk about that like if talk about family law criminal law constitutional law you can relate it you understand the concepts very easily but in company law it is all about the board meetings and shareholders and you know mm-hmm. how a company is formed this and that and that so it, it just becomes so you know difficult for a person to grasp on to you know what the concept is and you know how it works so you cannot visualize it mentally so you know the approach that you are basically proposing is a very very good one because when you talk about any bear act every bear act has this you know pattern that firstly there will be a definition clause then they will go towards you know what are the basic uh, you know provisions that are there then powers then functions then the penalization provisions and like the whole structure is like a story and if you read exactly. it like that it really helps you out in understanding you know how a whole thing works and you know one thing i would like to also add is that if you are able to understand and if like if a person has a business administration background bba background they also have a bit of a advantage compared to anyone who is from a ba or like any other law background you know sorry the background that a person has apart from the law degree that we basically do right. so that also right. you know, is a thing that basically helps but still it's not that you know 100% it helps it just from person to person it depends that is one very exactly. valid point so coming towards like my next question shimanji if i talk about the 2024 paper okay if you start to prepare from now what would your strategy be okay um there's considerable amount of time so i think in that case uh the first step would be to tackle the bigger subjects first so what you do is if somebody is trying to do say for example i personally would want to do two revisions and a few mocks before i sit for my exams ideally again i'm saying ideally none of this was done this year but ideally that would be a good uh, place to be in before the exam so then i would suggest that number first step is planning planning is very essential so first step is to figure out which big sub- subjects you want to tackle first say you want to take uh, jurisprudence first and you want to take constitutional law first yeah. so you take one big subject and you take a smaller subject say you take arbitration and you take environmental law with it basically that will be dependent upon the fact that a particular person is, is strong in one subject and weak on one subject so the most of the time that has to be dedicated is upon the weak subjects that a person has exactly and on this a smaller sub the person that the 
the person is strong say the, he's strong in environmental law so what he has to do is only revise he doesn't have to study he doesn't have to put efforts in that so i would suggest you start with that first and uh, if one has to make you know very uh, subject wise separate strategies yes. for themselves because this is not something that there is no straight jacket formula to it like i cannot prescribe a strategy for yeah yeah, yeah yeah because yeah. the thing with the strategy is that you know it's personal to everybody as you everybody. pointed out before also that from yes. person to person uh, their abilities the way they are able to grasp anything and the amount of effort they have put in beforehand that is also exactly. a very very important factor when it comes to this whole thing all of those factors are there and second of all is that you know every subject if you analyze this year's paper you would see that every subject has demanded a separate kind of a strategy out of you yeah so that is very important to understand so a sources of understanding that is you know watching analysis videos watching sam- you know the sample papers dissecting the sample papers like instead of focusing on your textbooks one should dedicate their times on the sample papers more that way say you so, you under you dissect the sample paper twice thrice everything will be in your hands and then you up take a different approach to every subject because every subject cannot be studied the same way so once that is set you prepare according to that and i would also suggest is solving a lot of mocks and one strategy that should be there is read 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 as, as many judgments as you can yeah and even for judgments the focus should be like if there's a constitutional bench judgment of the supreme court in the last 5 years read all of them it's very important because the one thing that we can be 100% certain of is that uh, reading is a habit that one has to develop for this particular exam because yes. regardless of what comes be it the recent cases be it the old cases whatever yes. you have to have a habit of reading and you know analyzing it understanding what is written exactly it's not just reading it because if you see this year's paper there were quite a few questions even if you had no idea about that subject if you would read the paragraph you could get two or three answers right out of the paragraph and the rest of them you could just analyze out yeah. you could just read the paragraph and analyze and get to the answer so the more you read in the more you will be able to understand and manifest things so more you will be able to analyze so i think one thing i would tell people is if you have time from right now read as much as possible and it's very important like and what what happens is that it's not for everybody that you they you know they are not able to read the judgments that well so you know instead if you are not able to read the judgments as a whole do read a good summary you know at least that exactly. should be the minimum bar that one has to exactly. try you know because if you are not and able I to read it yeah exactly and i think here one of the greatest help has been your summaries case law wise summaries i wanted to say something about this also is that a great thing about the summaries you come up with is that one there is a mixed list where there is a one liner of each case law and then there is subject wise case laws briefs so what it hap- what happens is that at least that's what helped me in my 20 days of preparation is that these are all revising tools basically yeah so right so when you're studying when you're studying the same thing from three different formats and three different approaches it's easier to recall it it's easier to remember things so i think that's one thing that i really appreciated about your content and i think that is what should be followed ideally as well by everybody else yeah definitely because, because the thing with the you know the reading aspect and the practice aspect of the whole thing is that you need to read 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 because without exactly. that nothing can happen and you have you know in this whole uh, video will you know we have uh, basically focused upon this whole thing multiple times that you know reading is that one exactly. factor that will really affect regardless of the uh, point exactly. that you know what is going to happen with the the paper has a landmark you know a centric paper Judgment. or it has a recent yeah. centric paper or is it only focusing upon the foundational subject does not matter reading is very important that is a very part a uh, important exactly. part yeah so if i come to my final question shivanjri uh w- like what message would you like to give the students who are watching this particular session you know what message yeah anything that you would like to say to them uh first thing first is that you are not supposed to lose hope 
I understand that this seems like a very daunting exam, mostly because it is we are very unable to you know predict the paper beforehand. The format of the paper, no matter how much you think that you know, yehi aega, wo nahi hota hai. Yeah, it's something different. So that should not be a factor why they are afraid of it. If you have confidence in your preparation. if you can at the end of the day 5 minutes before the exam if you can say that you know i have given my 120% in this preparation and whatever happens happens now that, that is it that is the make it or break it factor when you're walking into that exam hall no, and is, yeah. uh, so that is a very important yeah. point because you know uh, when it comes to the paper itself and it is daunting because you know like never in the history of uh, the legal you know exams itself has the paper been you know made in this manner because even the ielts paper has been following in the lead of the consortium itself the clad pg paper okay. and you know the approach they have set basically is the kind of approach that basically is expected from students who are pursuing their masters and who are expected of that you know you have to know the recent things the fundamentals of law and the analytical power that you know a lot of demands as a profession itself because that turns exactly. you into a very very you know a wholesome individual itself for the legal profession exactly. so that is the exactly. thing that the consortium is looking for in an individual who is preparing for this whole exam i basically think okay and apart from that one last thing i, uh, I would like to add also like uh, what's your like message for the students who have not been able to you know succeed or have not scored well in this exam if you may uh, don't lose heart yeah the best part is that you can write this exam quite a number of times i understand that the fees are a little high for it mm. but uh, if you can take a planned approach to it and have full faith in yourself you can do it if i could do it in 20 days you can do it it's really doable it's nothing to be afraid of all you have to do is just understand what is the philosophy of the exam and just shape yourself to it So that That's is a very, it. Very, that is a very very. That's all. Yeah, you can't you. lose hope on yourself. You can't yeah. lose confidence in yourself. And you know, like, like this is the thing that I always say that you know, this exam itself is not that you know you prepared for this exam and you did not succeed. So the knowledge that you gained in the process itself is something that will benefit you in the future as as well. The future for any well. for yes, any absolutely. endeavor you go for. So that is very very important one factor. Absolutely. So yeah, definitely. So thank you very much, Shri Manjri, for you know giving us thank you so time much for and you know. I think that the students who are watching this particular session will learn a lot from your experience and the way basically you went for the exam and you know how you prepared for it. Thank you very much.